Okay, we're gonna start. Okay, here's just this little outside my room here. My friend Jamie Brocky gave that to me um, as a housewarming gift. Uh, you know, Mary's new adventure gift. So that's kind of fun. But anyways, now we're gonna enter the craft room. And before I show you much, I really have to turn off the sound on my video or you won't be able to, or on my computer, otherwise you won't, um, it'll just be conflicting with everything. Hold on a second. But anyways, now we're gonna enter the craft room. And before I show you much, <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> That's what I was talking about. I always forget to do that. So anyways, I just put a few fun things on the wall here and I've got some old certificates from Stampin' Up! that are framed that I had up before. I'm not sure if I'm going to post those, but these are fun things. Um, the lighting's not, it's hard to get the lighting, but these are things that um, I received from Vicki Center. She's on my team and um, is a fabulous artist and I'm hoping that one day she has the time to, and her, her cousin Rhonda Bridges is the same way. They just I'm in awe of them. And it's hard to see this, but this is all three dimensional. Um, and there's glare because of the glass on the frame. But um, I'm hoping someday that Vicki Center and Rhonda Bridges will have some time to um, apply for the Artisan Design Team through Stampin' Up! because I think they'd be amazing at it. Okay, so here's my little um, Valentine sampler I made a few years ago. Uh, with my team, we each um, took turns make or we uh, each made two by two little swap cards with the Valentine theme, and then we swapped them or traded them. So this is the big news of my Stampin' Up! Just in the last few weeks uh, for the first of the year, um, my friend Mark Janice came over. If you know my friend Rosie, Mark is her husband, and he worked for us um, in our on our property on Brewer Road. Um, but he and Rosie and my friend Lisa Marlowe came a couple weeks ago, and Mark and I went to Home Depot, and then he put the shelving in my craft room closet. It had two sliding doors. He took those off, and I'm storing those in the basement. Um, it's just so much nicer. Everything's easily accessible. I know what I have. I know there's a gazillion frames up here that I need to put to use, but now I can see everything and I'm not battling with the doors. Um, so, so that's a good thing. I've got my Cricut and I've got um, scrapbook things at the bottom. Um, envelopes embellishments and my little swirly thing here. This is a Pampered Chef item that I, I have two of those and I love using those for all the small um, small things. Pencils, scissors, things like that. The things you need um, to get to easily and quickly. I have my packaging things. Um, I have adhesives. Embossing stuff is all together there. My glue guns, Mudge Podge, cases, um, lots of paper pumpkins that I'm behind on. I'll probably be taking some of those to my weekend event, which starts tomorrow in Blue Ash. I'm very excited. And if anybody out there is interested, um, I have to, um, I have spaces still available for the February event. So just let me know and I can send you the information. Now this, Andrea and I have done, we rearranged. My desk, if you were watching, was really, really close to the closet before. And every time I'd push out my chair, I'd kind of be backed in. And it was very um, cramped, claustrophobic feeling. Okay, so, and I had a lot of these um, Calyx cubes from Ikea, but she and I just moved things around. So now I have this awesome Big Shot station Okay, I've also got extra DSP and a container at the bottom. I've got all my Big Shot accessories in one of the cubes. I have unfinished projects um, in one of the bottom ones as well. So they're sorted and I know when I have a little extra time, I just grab a pile and do whatever needs to be done, whether it be um, stamping a sentiment and adding it and 
you know, whatever needs to be done for those. Okay. And then I have some, uh, two of the punch holders from Stampin' Storage. I love them. And because I have so much of the Calyx Cube shelving from Ikea, I always buy the, in, the ones that will fit in those just in case I want to put them in there. Um, but on, in this case, I've uh, just put them right there and it works out really well. I have plenty of room to use my Big Shots and my punches are all easily accessible and I have two now so I have room for new ones as they come in. And then up here is where I take my photos for my, um, that I put on my blog or Facebook or whatever I want to do. Um, one thing here that is so, I started doing this many years ago, I do so many cards that now I always have a supply of card bases cut and scored and I do it in the thick whisper white and the thick vanilla. I don't do all the colors. If I'm making a base from one of the other colors, I just do it at the time I'm using it. Um, I also cut out, and I'm running low, so I'll have to do, these are five and a quarter by four pieces that fit inside the standard size cards. Like if, for example, if my card base is um, early espresso, like I'm using this morning, I'll put one of those in. Another collage, um, my little Stampin' Up! speaker, that was a gift on the Alaska trip this summer. So I gotta play some music there. My sign, do what you love, love what you do. Okay, and down here, I don't have it mounted on the wall and um, I may be actually getting another um, small cubicle and just set this on top because I need a place to put some files. But anyways, my friend Sherry Parker's husband made this for me and they gave it to me as a gift. It's actually made from um, gutters that, you know, come from Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever and I can store ribbon and all kinds of little things and it's huge and it's heavy but for now that's where it is. And there's my window. I should open this a little bit more so I can look outside my on my front porch and they're working across the street. I don't know what kind of lines they're putting in. And then over here I have more of the cubicles. Okay, and I think the biggest thing for me is being organized. Um, I recently moved this past summer and my in my other house, our other house, um, I had basically two craft rooms. It didn't start out being that way, but I had one craft room and after a few years we put in custom cabinetry um, and it was beautiful and you could close the doors and it was just wonderful. But I have downsized and I needed to do something more economical, so this is a great option for me. So just a few decorations from on stage and things like that. Um, here I use some of the bins from Initials Inc, which my friend Joni Ayler sells, um, and they're great. They fit the 12 by 12 papers and all kinds of things, so that helps me be organized. And then here's a lot of the scrapbooks and albums I've done for my family or the girls and a few other things. Sherry Parker made that for me, isn't that darling? I need to feature that on my blog sometime. And this is something I love keeping out because it's just such a great memory. Um, a few years ago, gosh, it might have been four or five years ago already, maybe longer, um, I was asked to speak at a Stampin' Up! convention in Salt Lake City. And they sent me a stamp set and that was one of the projects I made and displayed or showed at the event. Now these are two shelving units, also from Stampin' Storage, for all of my stamp sets, okay? Most of them are current. No, I do not have them all. Um, um, and there's some that are retired, probably 20 or so there that are retired that I'm keeping for different reasons or they're carrying over, or, well, not carrying over, they're retired, but um, 
I still use a little bit for personal reasons, okay? And then I just have my Carl Cutter and my Simply Score standing up there because that's something I use only when I'm cutting and scoring large numbers of things, okay? Actually, I had this little thing sitting here and I thought, I know I can put it to use. And I decided this morning, um, and I didn't have time to do it before I went live, but I decided this morning that would be the perfect thing to put these on, okay? So I'm gonna do that this afternoon. And then this finally is my workspace, okay? And the reason I started out with the Calyx cubing is that um, before I moved, Emily had that uh, 16 cube unit and the desk unit in her bedroom. And uh, the rooms are smaller here, so her other furniture is in the bedroom across the hall. And I decided I would use this for my craft room instead of buying new, because she's not really using it being at college and everything. So that's how I added um, that's why I added all the other pieces of Ikea furniture. Here's one that I put at the end of the desk and it basically holds business things, catalogs, my business folders, things, envelopes that I mail catalogs in, um, things for my team, that sort of thing, business cards, okay. Up here I have this little file holder um, which just is a hodgepodge of things. I will mention to you, I have another one of those and sometimes I get it out and I will use that. I'll set it beside my desk or something. And it is great for just standing up the paper. Like if you're using several colors of cardstock or lots of designer series paper um, and making a lot of things, it's nice to have that just standing up and for the papers that you're using right then and there. And there's my other little uh, spindly thing from Pampered Chef. Okay, uh, my desk is a little full now, but that's how I work. A couple more things from Stampin' Storage. Um, I have the ink holders, so it holds my ink pad and the refill and the marker all together. And I just love being able to pull it out. And the Stampin' Up! Um, what do I want to say? Spinner was also great. I've used that for many, many years. Um, but recently I just went to this since I moved. Um, takes up a little less space, but it'll still, or, or not less, it's just a different arrangement of the space. Um, but still allows me to grab everything easily. And extras I have on top, the stays on and things like that. I have my um, Simply Chamois for cleaning inks. Somehow I bought extra sets. And then I have my blends. This is another Stampin' Storage piece that I've added. And if you're interested in purchasing Stampin' Storage, would you let me know? Because I'm a little, um, what do I wanna say? Like Stampin' Storage affiliate, and I get credit for people I recommend and their purchases. So it's, it's very, very little, but you know, it all adds up, right? Okay, and then this is where I put my computer so I can see all of you in the comments when I'm live. And hi, Carol. Hi, Danielle. And this is my planner and whatever. I keep my um, stamp and trimmer right next to me so it's available at all times. And then finally, I have my paper storage, which those are also from... Um, Stamp in storage, and I love them. I did buy the ones that fit the Calyx cube shelving, as you can see. Um, and usually I've arranged my paper in color families, and I don't know why this year, maybe just with all the other changes, I decided I'm going to try putting it in um, like order of the color spectrum, okay? And one final thing I'm gonna mention because I just think it is incredibly helpful especially on these gray days in Ohio, like today. Yes, I have my overhead light on, but you can see it's not very bright. I'm even in front of a window and it's not very bright. But having some kind of desk light or work light is so helpful. And it really 
has helped cut down on the weariness of my eyes, that sort of thing. Um, mine happens to be an Ot White. They are wonderful. They're very expensive, I will say. Um, so I just watched and waited until I saw them go on sale at Joann's or wherever. Um, but I highly recommend some kind of desk lamp. And then I have my setup for the um, for doing lives and videos. Um, and that's, I just take off. I only have that on my desk when I'm actually uh, using it. Okay, and my little chair, I did decide it probably would be better for me to have a chair on wheels just because then I can zip back and forth, but hey, getting up and taking a few steps is probably better for me anyways. Um, but that chair I got at um, Hobby Lobby of all places. Really good price and I just love it. And I actually have four more in my, um, at my kitchen table, my eat-in area. Okay, who wants to do some stamping? Well, first, does anybody have any questions about their, about my craft room, your craft room, need suggestions? Um, there's not a whole lot to tell, but I'm happy to share any information you may need. So you can always contact me with questions or um, get information about stamp and storage. And I'm always happy to help with whatever I can because I want you to keep on crafting and stamping. And I realize, and even just making small changes, like, well, I guess they're kind of big changes, like taking off the doors and putting in the shelving on my closet, moving the furniture. So the desk would have been right here before and then the chair, but just moving the furniture a bit to give me more space. I mean, I need more workspace. I didn't need all the empty space in front of the window. So, um, and it really was just on a whim. Andrea was here and she made the suggestion and I said, you know, I was thinking about that the other day. And so we just started emptying shelving and we moved things around and this is the result and I love it. And I told Andrea, um, I'm also more directly under the light, the overhead light. Um, but I told Andrea, I am so happy and more comfortable working in this room now. Um, it's all organized. I can see everything. I love it. Okay, how about some stamping now? Anybody ready for some stamping? I am. Okay, now this is going to be tricky, so bear with me. I've had been using a... Uh, I should make a house call. Marion, if you cook for me, I will come and make that house call for you. That would be so fun. Um, and I know you're a fabulous cook and I don't really like to cook, so that would be so fun. Okay, I'm going to take this off my selfie stick and move it to my stand. So bear with me, things are gonna get ugly and shaky, okay? I'm warning you. And if I'm lucky, thanks, Amy. Like I had some help, and honestly, this is the I think fourth revision of the craft room. Um, but you know that's that's what happens when you move or rearrange or do things differently. It takes a little time to figure out um, how things are going to fit and where you need things and how you're going to store them, so that it is. Um, how do I? Ask? It, it, it makes you more time efficient, it makes everything easier. Um, so if anybody needs any help with that, I am glad to help you. Um, can't always live hefty, heavy things, but we can work together and do some awesome magic like Andrea and I did in here. And I have to give another plug for my friend Mark Janus uh, for doing the shelving and, and my brother-in-law had even offered too. So, um, it's great that I have people like that um, willing to jump in and help. Okay, so let's stamp. Um, I told you today I would do another masculine card, but I would not be using the classic garage that I did the other day. Was it everybody out there here with me the other day? If not, you'll want to go back to um, Tuesday's Facebook Live and check this out. And I don't have it up on my, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't have it up on my um, 
blog just yet. I wanted it to go yesterday, but with downloading the video and editing and all that, but it will definitely go up today, okay? But a fun gate fold card is what we made on Tuesday. Okay, so tonight I'm featuring, or tonight, this morning I'm featuring the Best Catch Cling Stamp Set as well as the Catch of the Day Thinlets, okay? And some of these are ones that just coordinate. Like this, there's no stamp for it, but they give us a coordinating thinlet, which is fun, and we'll be using those this morning. Um, and there are several others like that, like this one is and that one. Um, and then others, well, this is a little small one. This coordinates here, um, the fish, um, this, the hat and the basket all also have thinlets, but they're currently on my big shot already to go to show you. Um, so it's, it's just a great set that is available as a bundle. That means you get 10% off both products when you use the bundle item number. And unfortunately, I missed that when I ordered the stamp set. I got so excited because it reminds me of my brother, Tom, um, that I completely missed the thinlets at all. I never even saw them and somebody mentioned them and I said, what? So I just got these in so I couldn't wait to play with them. Okay, so the best catch bundle. Okay, ready to see what we're going to make today? How's that? Cool, huh? This is my envelope. And this is my card. And I'm going to tell you right up front, this is one of those cards that looks like it's difficult. It is not, I promise you. If I can do it, anybody can do it, okay? Um, you know me, I'm not, I'm not an artist. I'm a wonderful crafter, and I think I'm creative, but I am not an artist, okay? But that's the thing I love about Stampin' Up! products. They make it easy for me to look like an artist um, and give me quality products to help me produce quality cards and other paper crafts. And that's the inside. Okay, so let me show you how I did this. I'm going to put this here and I don't think, I'm trying to see, maybe I'll set it here. I'm trying to see where you can see it. Okay, um, but this can get a little messy. The first thing I'm going to do is, and I'll show you this in a minute, and we're gonna talk about this water coloring. I have, again, in the interest of time, I have my pieces all ready. I have my card base, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter, so standard size, A4 card. Inside, I have put a uh, five and a quarter by four inch white base, so I have something to write on. In, because obviously it wouldn't work on the early espresso cardstock. I have a five and a quarter, four inch piece of crumb cake, and I have a four and a quarter and three inch piece of pool party. Okay, and then you're also going to need um, some scraps of mossy meadow and old olive for the. Um, I can't think what these are called, cattails. Um, cattails and leaves, okay? And then you're going to need a little bit of, and I'm talking scraps, little bit of Cajun craze and a little bit of, let me grab it here, crumb cake, okay? Because we're gonna do some stamping and cutting out with that, okay? And I already have those on my Big Shot. And the, for this, I used watercolor paper. Um, and this is what I would suggest when you're using the aqua painter um, to do some water coloring like we are today because it um, absorbs the uh, absorbs the water well and mixes the color well, okay? Um, so what we're gonna do, I think, is do some stamping first, water uh, water coloring and then we'll put the card together. The reason is, now this one's already dry, I did it previously, but um, I want to show you, 
this. I've already stamped it with stays on. That's a permanent ink and you want to use that when you're watercoloring, okay? And I'm gonna put this paper underneath because it does get messy, okay? Now I want you to look at this fish and look at this one, okay? You can see one's lighter, one's darker, the colors in different places. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's gonna look like a work of art. Don't try to make it perfect. First of all, watercolor is not perfect. Um, and you're just gonna blend some colors and you're going to cut it out with the thinlet and it's gonna look fabulous, okay? So let me show you what I did. Okay, now with the watercoloring, because these new stamp pads fit so tightly, it's harder to squeeze them and get ink on the lid like we did with the older style. And so what I do from now on, have since we've got the new style ink pads, is I just use my ink refills and put a drop or so in the lid. And that's what I work with when I'm watercoloring. Okay, now this is one of our wonderful aqua painters just filled with water. You wanna give it just a tiny squeeze to start the water flowing. Okay, and you only need one because you can clean it between colors, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just pick up a little bit of this Cajun Craze ink. And if you want it more muted color, you just add more water, okay? See like that? If I take them from here, it's gonna be real dark, okay? And I'm just gonna start with kind of a medium shade and I'm just gonna, oh, I guess I could use a little more color than that. And you don't need to squeeze this. If, and in fact, if you hold up here, chances are you're gonna squeeze it without even knowing. Hold it down here at the neck and you won't be squeezing as much, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and paint the second one at the same time, okay? And you can add darker or lighter, do whatever you want. But notice how quick and fast I'm doing this. I'm not staying in the lines. It's going to be cut out with the framelit. Um, you can see on this one, I went outside the line. It doesn't matter, it still looks really cool, okay? Now to clean it, I just go back and forth, back and forth until the water looks clear, okay? When now that it looks clear, I'm safe to switch to my other color. I'm gonna put a drop in here because I wanna start out a little, a little lighter, I think. And I'm just gonna go over like this. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm not doing anything that somebody else can't do, okay? And I even went over some of that Cajun Craze color to mute it a little bit. And they're all gonna look different because I'm not worrying about um, I'm not worrying about coloring in the lines or or how much color I'm getting in different places, things like that. I just want to put some color on and blend it. Now it's a little bright. If you like it like that, you can leave it. Let it dry and be bright. Okay. Or what I did on mine, and I'm actually going to try my next, uh, I have to let these dry. But once they're dry, I'll make another card to see what it looks like with the brighter colors. But I think it's gonna look just as fabulous, just a different look, okay? But, oops, that's not the one I wanted. I was gonna take a little bit. No, that is the one I wanted, crumb cake, sorry. Okay, and I'm just gonna take some of this and I'm gonna add some brown in there, some of the crumb cake. It's not real dark brown, okay? And see how the difference I have now? If you want a little more here. And with this one, what I did was I ended up going over the whole thing, just a little brown to make it more muted, okay? So that's that. You can see there's nothing fancy about it. I'm not worrying about staying in the lines, etc. cetera, okay? Um, and if you would, click your share button if you haven't already to share this Facebook Live video with others, whether they see it now or see it later. It really does help me greatly when um, you share. Okay, so now we're gonna let this dry a bit. Set that aside. 
I'm going to use this piece of five and a quarter, five and a quarter by four inch um, crumb cake. Okay, and now I'm just going to stamp the fish randomly. So there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's all just random. I turn the fish so that I get different elements of the fish, but mainly you're going to see the frame. Okay, this is going to frame the main section of our card. Okay, quick and random, right? Okay, I have a lot of things going on here, so bear with me. Um, not hard so far, right? This is the hardest thing you're going, going to have to do, and it's really not hard. Do not make it hard. Keep it simple. Um, freestyle it. That's what we're doing. Okay, good word. We freestyle. Okay. Now, I could go ahead and add my pool party, but when I did that, I felt like it needed something more, and I couldn't really put my finger on it at first. I couldn't really think what that more was. I kept going to embossing folders, but nothing was shouting out to me. So what I ended up doing to get this texture is I stamped Pool Party ink onto the Pool Party cardstock with a clear block. So all I'm doing is inking up my block, okay? Now I, on this one, I inked up my block and put it right down, okay? So it's kind of dark, okay? Let me show you what happens that way. Oh, I have to pull it off here. There, okay, whoops, I missed that edge. Don't worry about it, just add a little. You can even do that and get some lines in there, okay? Try not to miss the edge, but it's fine. It's gonna be all worked out, people won't even notice. Now what I wanted to show you, if you want a little less color on that, what you can do is stamp off first. And by stamping off, does everybody know what that means? Stamping off means I stamp onto my grid paper or scrap paper and then I stamp onto my cardstock. I think I did the same thing that time on that edge. I don't know why. Okay, and do you see the difference? Okay, darker, lighter. So you decide what you want it to look like. Try them both. Do one on each side like I did. Okay, and I'm closing these up and getting everything out of the way as I go because it's just so many things going on. Okay, I think on this one, what do you think? Darker, lighter? Hi, Joyce Whitman. Okay, I think I'm going to go with the lighter this time. And I'm going to adhere that to my stamped crumb cake cardstock. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put this on my card base. Okay. But what a difference the stamping of the fish and the stamping of the clear block make, okay? Really adds a lot of dimension. And it's easy, right? Super easy. Okay, now I'm going to add my cattails, okay? Now, as you know, cattails, when they, before they open, they're brown on the top. So I'm just taking my early espresso, Stamp and write marker, and I'm coloring those so they're dark, okay? I'm going to put the first one on with just my Fuse or Snail Adhesive, whichever you have, okay? And then the other one, I'm going to pop up on Dimensionals. On this, I'm going to use the Mini Dimensionals. Did you guys notice my floor, my carpet, when we were doing the craft room tour? I vacuumed for you guys this morning. It was a wreck. This floor was a wreck with all I have going on and all the prep I've been doing with make and take packets and samples and optional classes for my weekend event starting tomorrow. It, it truly was a wreck. Okay, now I'm going to grab my Big Shot. 
else. I know what I forgot to do. I need to add my sentiment. I probably should have done that before I adhered this to my card base. So now I have to be really careful that I don't have a goof. Oh, pretty good, not terribly straight, but it's okay. It's okay. I'll send it to my brother, he won't even notice. <laughs> Just kidding, Tom. Tom watches sometimes. Okay, so now I'm ready to cut out my fish and my other things. Okay, remember I told you you needed a little bit of scrap paper, Cajun craze, and also crumb cake, and then we have the watercolor. Now remember, um, these two aren't completely dry yet, so I'm not going to cut those out. I'm going to cut out the one I painted earlier. Um, Yes, Amy, I do have the Michael same initials as Michael Kors. <laughs> My family gave me that watch a few years ago. Um, I get asked that all the time. Where did you find a watch with your initials? So, okay. So I'm. what I wanted to show you was that you can cut out all these pieces at once. You could have even, um, I could have even cut out the cattails at the same time. There's enough room on my plate to do that. Um, but I cut those out just ahead of time, okay? And notice too how easy it was for me to grab my Big Shot from my Big Shot station. Usually when I'm just working at home, I go over there, but it's great for um, my Facebook Lives as well as making videos that I can just reach behind me and grab it. And I can reach behind me and put it away as well. That is one thing too I've been working on. Clean up as you go. Clean up as you go. Um, Sue Thomas, where in Ohio are you? I'm in the Columbus area, Westerville. It's not snowing here yet, but there's snow on the ground and it is cold, cold, cold. And I know we're getting more this weekend. I was concerned because I do have my creative, creative escape weekend in Cincinnati starting tomorrow. But Northwest Corner, okay. Um, and uh, my, uh, so I, I, get, I always get concerned because number one, I'll be traveling, but I have customers traveling as well. And um, it looks like we're going to be okay, though. It, I'm hearing that most of the snow will be coming on Saturday and early Sunday. So I hope that's still the case today um, because then people can get to the event tomorrow and they'll be safe to go home late Sunday. Some are, many are staying um, for the optional Monday, um, which should be fine too. But you never know this time of year. We've had 